Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 6, Part 3. In the last part of the build log, I focused on the case mods, but I didn't quite get them finished. I still had a bit of painting to do. So I'm going to get that all finished in this part of the build log so that you'll be able to see the finished and assembled case with all of the modifications. Once I've done that, I'll move on to starting to install the hardware, configuring the water cooling loop, all of that. Right now I'm preparing the hardware to be installed into the case. I've installed the CPU memory and CPU water block. I still need to install the graphics card water block. So I'm now just going to give you a quick look at this config. So it looks awesome. The memory matches up with the motherboard really well. All of the blues and blacks are going to match up with the color scheme of this build perfectly. The EK Supremacy looks a bit big, bulky and out of place on this tiny ITX motherboard but once it's got the blue coolant flowing through it and lit up with you know LEDs it's going to look great. So certainly a compact but potent little configuration. I'm looking forward to seeing what this CPU and motherboard can do when I push it to its limits. I'm now going to go back and show you where I'm up to with the case mods. Now I've actually gone a step backwards here and disassembled the case again. The reason I did this was to make a few final cuts in the case and also because I wanted to put a few more coats of paint on all of the panels. Now the reason I did this is basically just because I'm really fussy. The finish on the final panel ended up slightly different to the finishes on the rest of the panels. So I put a few more coats of paint on all of the panels just to match up the finishes. And the reason the finishes ended up different was because I had a lot of trouble painting the final panel. It took a lot more surface prep, a lot more sanding between coats, and it end, ended up with a, a smoother and glossier finish, which I'm actually really happy with. Now that these panels have you know, so many coats of paint on them, they're extremely strong. The, the surface that I've ended up with you know, it's smoother, it's glossier, it's a lot stronger. It suits the blue color a lot better. If you remember, the, the finish that I was going for originally was basically the finish of the stock paint job on the case, which is pretty much a satin or matte kind of orange peel finish. You know, it's a little bit raised. But I'm really, really happy with what I've ended up with. It's definitely worth all of the work. Just to give you an idea, the radiator grill, which I think is steel, took three days for surface prep, painting and dry time. The plastic panels took nine days. So, definitely a lot of work. Ba basically, plastic is can be challenging to paint. And I find the softer the plastics, the more flexible they are, the more difficult they are to paint. And these panels are the Bitphoenix soft touch materials, so they were a nightmare to paint. Basically it just means a lot of work. So there it all is. All the panels are painted and complete. Let's give you a close up there. That's basically what that whole panel looks like. So fairly glossy. Okay, now the final cuts that I had to make in the case. I ended up having to make a, a fair few more cuts. One of them was in the bottom, so I've had to cut this hole here. Now these here are actually for the fittings on the bottom of the radiator, and this here is for the radiators to sit down through. Basically my initial measurements were about 1.5 millimeters off, and the holes didn't quite line up on the front, you know, by 1 to 2 millimeters. So, because of that, I've had to let the radiator slightly hang out of the bottom. But, you might think a hole in the bottom of the case is a big problem, but actually the gaps that are left around the outside of the radiator are only as big as, you know, the holes in the case here. So, I'm also going to put some U-channel around there, which will make it even tighter. So what you end up with is not really a hole in the bottom of the case, just a few small gaps. You'll notice that I've gone around and touched up all of the cuts. Now, originally I actually did this with a piece of sponge just to touch up exactly where it was needed. But what I've done, I've actually sprayed a lot of this case. So I've, I've started here, I've put a couple of coats on around there. 
and it basically goes down to about here, a couple of coats, and then I've blended it out into the stock paint of the case. So I think it looks awesome. The case is looking great. This entire front panel has been sprayed. So I've done a lot of work you know, on the case itself as well. A lot of painting. This entire back panel has been sprayed. Basically the paint I used matches up with the color of the case perfectly. Or almost perfectly. And I did a lot of sanding. It's all been done properly. I've definitely taken the time. Now, the other cuts I needed to make, I'll just roll the case over, were in the top. What I did, originally I just traced out the inside of the shroud, so just around the inside there. But the radiator didn't actually fit through the original hole that I had, so I just had to cut it slightly bigger so that the radiator could fit through it. Because the radiator Something that I forgot with these shrouds is that the radiator sits up inside the shroud slightly, about three millimeters. And what I had before, the case panel was coming in between the radiator and the shroud, preventing it from sitting up inside the shroud. Now I actually ended up painting about 75% of the case. And as I mentioned, the reason I did this initially was to touch up the paint around my cuts. But the, the paint job on the case is not that great, mainly on the inside of the case. So it was actually almost bare metal in some places. So I got a bit carried away and I ended up painting most of the case. It definitely looks a lot better now. Some of my cuts actually look factory because I've gone around and sprayed them. The case just looks great. Okay, as you can see I've installed the 280mm radiator and fans into the coolant's 280mm shroud. So this is all ready for insulation into the top of the case. I've used Montsmart Black 140mm fan grills to protect the radiator fins. Now all the bolts that I've used in this build are black M4 button head Allen key bolts. I've used a combination of 4mm, 6, 8, 30 and 35 millimeter. I've also used M4 washers and nuts so you'll see them all around the build. So you can see the config is very low profile. The radiator is only 29.6 millimeters thick and it's sitting partially inside the shroud. I just love the aesthetics of the noise blocker fans. These are the noise blocker PK2s. You can see I've also used ModSmart black 140mm grills on this side to protect the fans. Over here you can see that I've mounted the reservoir and pump configuration to the 240mm radiator. So this is all ready for installation. I'm trying to do as much of the assembly as I can before I install components into the case because it is going to get tight in that case as the build progresses. You can see that I've also started the Bits Power Crystal Link configuration. I'm actually going to try to do as much of this loop as I can in Crystal Link. And I'm really excited about the way it's going to look. Now, I've mounted the pump and reservoir configuration with the two 50mm Alpha Cool res mounts. So I've bolted those to a UNZ2 bracket. Underneath that is a ModSmart Black 120mm grill. Then I have the Noise Blocker PLPS 120mm fan. And I've just bolted straight through all of that and into the radiator. I'm definitely going to sleeve all of the cables in this build, so don't worry about that. So you can see the fittings that I have are Bits Power Black Sparkle, as always. It's my signature. So I have a couple of 90 degree single rotary fittings, a couple of 90 degree dual rotary fittings, and some extensions here and there, as well as the crystal link configuration. So that's all ready to go. Okay, here it is at last, the fully assembled case and the radiators are also installed. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad that I put so much work into the paint. It really shows the finishes are just perfect on all of the panels. And I really like the color scheme. It's definitely going to look a whole lot better once the build is finished because there's going to be a lot more black and also blue inside of the build. I'm going to have nice big side panel windows so that you can see all of the hardware. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to mention a couple of things that people have made comments about while you were taking a look around the build. I always do my very best to get my videos live as soon as I possibly can. 
I want to get them to you all ASAP, but for me it is always quality over quantity. And that goes for everything for me, mainly my builds. I will always take all the time I need to perfect my builds. Nothing else matters, even if I end up uploading a video late, you know, which I absolutely hate doing, the quality of the build is my absolute priority. Now the other thing is, just take a look at the modifications that I've done to this case. Look at the front panel. I have modified this front panel purely to increase ventilation to the radiator mounted in the front of the case. So it's a practical mod purely for performance. Then take a look at the top panel. I've mounted a shroud. This is in increases the radiator capacity, which again improves the performance of the water cooling loop. It also increases the room inside the case so that I can install more hardware, more high performance hardware. So basically all the mods that I've done to this case are for performance, for practical reasons, but I've done them in such a way that they are aesthetically pleasing. You know, I've used nice smoke plexi, I've included some paint, all of that. So this is because I come from an overclocking background. Every time I build a system, if it's up to me, performance is the priority. I'm not going to go doing mods just for the purpose of, you know, making a build look pretty. Uh, instead, I'll put that time and that effort and money into increasing the performance. So no doubt you've definitely had a good look at the case by now, the mods, the painting that I've done. But I will just have a quick talk about it. I did show you in the first part of the build log most of what I was doing to the case. But basically the difference now is that it's all put together, the radiators are installed, but also the, the case feet are installed, the flexible plastic panels at the top and bottom of the case. And I painted them blue all to fit in with the front panel because I have the blue strip around the outside of the front panel. And that fits in perfectly with those with the case feet because they're you know around the outside also I think you can see what I mean by that that's why I picked the colors that's why I laid the colors out like this and then I have the black which goes all the way across behind the white radiator grill because you know the plexi is black and then the radiator is black and I actually also have another black radiator grill in behind the white one it's another 240 millimeter phobia radiator grill I decided to leave it black not paint it white like the other one because I didn't really want you to be able to see it. I wanted it to blend in with the radiator behind it. So I'll talk about why I installed that shortly. Now the, the colors on the top, I think they work well because you know in the middle it's all black, the shroud, the fans, the fan grills. Then you have two white strips down either side and then again around the perimeter you have blue. Now looking from the side I think it's really important that I make sure that the side panel windows are as big as possible. Otherwise there's going to be too much white in the side panels and it's going to look funny having two blue strips, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then all this white in the middle. So if the side panel window is as big as possible, it, it'll be great because it will mean that you know, you'll be able to see plenty of the inside of the build. Now for a look in at the 280mm radiator in the roof and the 240mm radiator in the front of the case. Now these radiators were a tight fit. Not at the front here, you can see there's actually a 20mm gap between the end of the 280 and the front panel of the case and also a 20mm gap between the top of the 240 and the 280. There's plenty of room up there for ventilation, for mounting. There was no problems there. It was at the bottom of the case that I had trouble with the 240 millimeter radiator, which is why I had to cut these holes. You know, these holes solve all my problems, but it was still a very tight fit, you know, which I wanted. But you, you can see the fittings are actually about half a millimeter off the bottom of the case. So they were almost touching. I nearly needed to cut another hole just for those fittings, which, you know, I certainly wouldn't have done that. But you know, those fittings are, are looking awesome. It's just the very beginning of the crystal link configuration. I'm really looking forward to continuing work on the water cooling loop. The tubing routing so far is just spot on exactly how I want it. Now, this is the, the secondary radiator grill that I installed. 
Now the reason I installed this was actually to cover up the cut in the front panel of the case because looking in on this angle you can see the you know jagged edge cut in front of the radiator and that was the ugliest cut in the entire build because there's really nothing you can do when you're cutting honeycomb whatever you're using to cut it kind of you know bends it over flicks it over and makes it look jagged and terrible so I, I used another radiator grill on the inside to clean up and cover up those cuts and I think it looks really good you know it adds an extra black accent it adds more strength that front panel is so incredibly strong it's actually stronger than the original front panel because you have two thick steel radiator grills you got the the radiator then the original case panel is actually still there the plexi there's so many panels there and there's you know the bolts just bolt straight through all of those panels there's eight bolts holding the radiator into position now the reason these holes are a little bit too big at the bottom is because when I was measuring them up I didn't want to go assembling the entire front panel and radiator because the more times I assemble and disassemble you know all of the panels that I modified the paint is still a little bit soft because I'm, I'm working on it a bit too early there's a chance of damaging them so I just sat the radiator into position and marked that I did get it very close but instead of those holes being you know one to two millimeters they're more like three to four millimeters so it's easy fixed I'll just put a bit of u-channel around there and that will close up those holes it's only the ones on either side the rest of them are very close now looking at the 280 millimeter radiator now this is where it was a tight fit at the front and down either side there's plenty of room but at the back the end tank, the inlet and outlet was actually touching the back of the case. I'll show you that as the build progresses. Just a quick look in from the other side of the build. At this point in time, you're basically looking, you know, the build looks the same from either side. You can see the cables on this side. I have the two fan cables coming down from the top. I haven't yet connected up the other two fan cables. Any cables that are not sleeved are definitely going to be sleeved. Every single cable in this build will be sleeved because there's really no way of hiding a lot of the cables in this build. You know, obviously I'm going to have to do the cable management in such a way that it's all aesthetically pleasing because I'm planning on having two big side panel windows, one in each side panel. So almost all of this build is going to be perfectly visible. So de the cable management is definitely going to be a challenge taking that into consideration. Now you can see the hole in the, f in the bottom of the case there. It's pretty much the same size as the hole on the other side. So U-channel will definitely fix that. So there's the cuts in the bottom and the radiator just slightly hanging out as well as the fittings. The main problem was this here, this raised area. You know, those fittings are above that about three millimeters. So you can see the U channel is going to fit in there nicely, and the rest of it is actually really tight. There's only, you know, one to two millimeter gaps around all of that. So just a look from the other side. Very, very tight across that front there. And just a look at how much the radiator is actually protruding. One to two millimeters is it. So I was very close with my initial measurements, but not quite and that's why I had to make that cut. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do it but you know I had it as a backup. So you can see my cuts along here but you know you're never going to be really looking up that way. Okay I'm going to leave this part of the build log here. Now that the case mods are finished the exciting part of the build begins. The next part of the build log is going to be action-packed because that's when I start installing components into the case and that's when the build really starts to take shape. I still need to install the graphics card water block. Once I've done that I can install everything into the case. I also need to sleeve the power supply which is going to be a big job and I'm going to modify the power supply cables because I definitely don't want any extra cable length in this build. The cables need to be extremely clean. The cable management needs to be perfect. So I've got all of that to, to do. There's so much more to do in this build. This is really only the very beginning. I still need to configure the water cooling loop, which is definitely the part of the build that I am most excited about. I have some amazing things in mind for this loop. I think it's going to look incredible. 
It's definitely going to be one hell of a land box. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.